Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel where today we've got something slightly different. Yeah, we haven't got a Bridges batting collapse or a showcase of our drops you guys are always so keen to mention. We're blessed with some international cricketers on show as well as a few familiar faces. We're hosting two 2020s between Italy and an 11 made up of Crickex overseas players. These matches acting as a warm up for Italy in preparation for what was their T20 World Cup qualifiers up in Edinburgh a few weeks back. The Italians qualified to this final qualification stage and were up against Scotland, Germany, Jersey, Denmark, Austria and test playing nation Ireland, with two of these sides guaranteed to make it to the 2024 World Cup hosted in the West Indies and USA. The toss was uncontested and Italy chose to bowl first. And your eyes aren't deceiving you, that is Will O'Donnell opening the batting for the overseas 11 and back at the Barker Meads in front of our cameras. This year he's up at Totteridge in North London and he's joined at the top of the order by Kiwi Gareth Severin playing over here at Hayes in Kent. Much like many of the cricket matches this summer, if you can call it that, the rain has started to come down and it wasn't long before the covers came on and we faced a slight delay. Luckily, it was just passing and the sun came out. Resuming after the break and into his second over, we've got Gareth Berg, who boasts over 300 first class wickets during a career that's seen him at Middlesex, Hampshire and now North Ants. Severin becomes the first man to go today, chipping that to extra cover off the bowling of Singh. On hand with the rags for the ball is the Italian head coach Kevin O'Brien, forever remembered for that knock against us English, posting the fastest World Cup century of just 50 balls in 2011. Next to the crease we've got Raminda Wijasoria, the Sri Lankan who applies his trade just down the road at Ifield CC in Crawley. Bowlers, bowlers. Great effort, great effort. Surviving the slip on the adjacent strip, Raminda has timed the cover off that one and with it brings a close to the power play with the Crick X11 on 48 for one from the first six. Coming on to bowl the eighth over, the Adelaide striker spinner and formerly of Roffey is Ben Menenti, brother of Harry Menenti who took the second over for the Italians with both brothers flying over from Oz specially for the qualifiers. Ten overs done and halfway through, the overseas are 84 for one. That brings up the 50 for Dozza. Just loves being on the Bridges camera, doesn't he? He was out on the golf course with the Bridges boys this morning and it's a good job his ball striking has improved into the afternoon. Thank you. 
Akdos doesn't make it three in a row and he goes for 64 from 39. Caught well on the fence by Di Bartolomeo to the bowling of Fernando. Wow, some amazing improvisation there by new man to the crease, fellow Sri Lankan Shihan Fernando, who's playing in Surrey at Woking and Horsell. 13 overs done and the overseas are flying along at 10s, currently on 132 for 2 from 13. Raminda slaps that one straight back at the bowler, who's luckily fine, then brings up his 50 with a single that our camera must have missed. After a few boundaries, including that huge slog sweep, Fernando is dismissed, caught by the keeper, trying to go big again. To the bowling of Berg from this top end. Next in, on his turf and skippering the home side today, is Thorn Parks, hopefully looking to continue this run fest to the end of the innings. Thorne whacks that one over to the garages. Menenti just making contact with the wall while still in possession of the ball. And rather unluckily for the Italians and his brother's bowling figures, that one signalled a six. What a shot that one is. Thorne doesn't even switch hands for that reverse pull, if that's the right name for it. And that flies over the huge boundary down there and into the netting. These two in full flow now, almost trying to outdo one another. And with just 12 balls left, 200 is already on the board. An incredible innings from Raminda Wijasoria finally coming to an end, with Gareth Berg and Harry Menenti teaming up for that one. Raminda scoring a 73 runs in just 42 balls. Next up at number six, and now in the final over the innings, Namibian international Nicol Lofty Eaton of Nottinghamshire Club Hucknall. He comes and goes, always an unenviable task coming in at the end. Caught well by Menenti down at long arm. Always with the team's intentions at heart, skipper Thorne tries to pinch a single through to the keeper, but wasn't even in the picture. That single brings an end to the Crickex innings, finishing up on a massive 208 for six from their 20. Some heavy hitting that we've all seen before from Dozer at the start and Raminda Wijasoria keeping that up throughout the innings on his way to 73. And then not forgetting Bridges boy Thorne with his 32 of just 10 towards the back end. Will be a tough ask for the Italians in reply and they'll need to make the most of this power play, which might not be too easy when first over is to be taken by Tando Ntini, who's playing at Lordswood in Kent. And yes, He's the son of South African legend, Makai Arantini. Oh, 
And that one goes down in the first. Dozo running back at slip. Can't take that over the shoulder. And I'm sure that will fire up Tando even more. Opening the batting for Italia are Justin and Anthony Mosca, who will both be keen to get off to a quick start. In the fourth over, the first wicket falls and George O'Connor picks up Anthony Mosca. Well judged by third Sri Lankan on show today, Imesh Udiyanga, who's down at Linfield, not far from here this season. Next to the crease at 21 for one is Marcus Campopiano, who knows the Sussex pitch as well, having played his cricket at Cookfield growing up, but now applying his trade at East Molesley in Surrey. Replacing Antini is Chris Swanson, a Kiwi who's up in Harpenden in the Hertfordshire Leagues this season. Campo has absolutely nailed that one. Got to be worth a replay. Yannick Leonard gets the other Mosca. The slow left armour from the Windies will probably admit he's bowled better balls, but Doz is on hand to take that one in the ring. In the sixth over, Italy have started well. Despite those two wickets, they're up with the rate at 50 for two. Nikul Lofty Eaton and his wrist spin now on to bowl. Takes a brave man to bowl spin from this short end at Bridges. Catch it. Down on at one. Lovely boy. Got his and one, dear lad. Catch it. Imesh Udiyanga joins the party. That one caught by Raminder at backwards point to dismiss Ben Menenti for 12. The score now 68 for three after nine overs. So the halfway stage and the Italians just dipping below the rate out of the power play. They're 80 for three, needing 129 from 60 at 13s and over now. Trying to send another one onto the tiles. Cam Poppiano doesn't get all of this one and Swanson takes that one diving forward off the bowling of Lofty Eaton. Number two to the Namibian leg spinner, 
Jaspreet Singh caught for 11 off four balls. Jag ball, wrong and through the gate. Get that volume on. Come on! <laughs> Not quite a hat trick, but three and four deliveries for Lofty Eaton will really damage the Italian chase. And yes, Will O'Donnell called that one down at long off in front of us. So 12 overs done now, and the Italians really up against it. Six wickets down with 103 on the board. 106 runs needed from 48 balls. And now number four for Nicol Lofty Eaton. Another wrong and ending an Italian batter's day. Antini returns and having not got anything on that on its way to the stumps, he thinks quickly to remove the stump and run out Berg after that mix-up. 124 for 8 now Italy and as long as there's no miracle here, I think they'll be coming up short. Last over and it's mathematically impossible at 143 for 8. 66 needed off 6, just keep your foot behind the line. George O'Connor wraps it up with those two last wickets in the final over. The Crick X11 win the first T20 by a comfortable 65 runs. Italy started their chase well, but those wickets really catching up with them. And it goes without saying, three wickets falling in that 11th over hurt them massively. All in all, a great showcase of talent. I'm sure you'll all agree. Thank you all for watching and be sure to check out the second T20, which will be posted later next week. It's a last ball thriller. Trust me, not one to be missed. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. I don't think they'd score massive runs in the